Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Hey Ed, let me ask you a question. When are you guys getting listed in America for our American investors? Yeah, so Rich, uh, as our investors know now, we're listed on TSX Venture Exchange, but we're taking the necessary procedures that we need to do to get ourselves listed on, on the OTC in the US. Expect that to happen sometime uh, mid uh, first quarter this year. So investors can look uh, forward to that uh, in, in the US, Rich. Hi, how you doing? I am your host, Rich, and we have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of First Helium Inc., Edward Nikki, How you doing today, Ed? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to have you on the show. Very excited about First Helium Inc. And why don't we get started, Ed? And I'm going to ask you a few questions. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with First Helium Inc.? Yeah, sure, Rich. Uh, so education-wise, uh, I have an engineering degree, and I followed that up with uh, an MBA in finance and accounting. Wow. Um, I'm based in Calgary now. I started my career in the oil and gas uh, sector and then uh, spent uh, just about 15 years in the investment banking community here in Calgary, mainly funding junior oil and gas stories as well as other oil and gas um, sector companies. Um, a lot of my time was also spent on M&A work uh, during that period of time. So, yeah, in terms of First Helium, I was introduced uh, to the company by uh, a fellow that used to head up our uh, retail brokerage group uh, at the last investment bank I was at. He uh, is a good mutual friend, uh, one of the founders of, of First Helium, in fact. So I uh, met the founder, uh, got to chatting, loved what the company was doing. And I'm going to say uh, for the next year or so, myself and the key technical team, uh, the core group uh, of uh, First Helium got together. We looked at the assets of the company, did a bunch of our own work. Uh, and then in the fall of 2020, so just a little over a year ago, we uh, uh, were part of a recap and reorg of the company. We made our own investments and uh, took, the, took the company forward from there, Rich. That sounds fantastic. Congratulations on doing what you guys have done thus far. And I know our community is very excited to see you guys evolve and grow. Can you tell us what are some of the milestones set this year for First Helium Inc. that shareholders that are watching can look forward to for the company? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the first things that we've been talking about, of course, is we've got to bring our one of 30 oil well discovery into production. And we hope to do that uh, in uh, February, early February, in fact. Um, in addition to that, we'll be looking to drill two to three exploration wells um, on our Worsley uh, helium exploration property and potentially on our southern exploration block as well. Um, beyond that, the company is looking at finalizing its plans to construct or install a helium processing facility up at our Worsley property. And that would include either financing it uh, with some non-dilutive debt or other forms of uh, capital or uh, entering into an agreement or arrangement with uh, a third party custom processor. So those are a couple of big events that I see happening during the course of uh, this year, Rich. Oh, I can't wait to watch it happen. Now, we also believe here at Rich TV Live that having a strong management team is extremely important and it contributes to the overall success of a public company. Can you tell us a little bit about your management team here at First Helium and talk a little bit about some of their past success in the public markets? Yeah, so the core group uh, at First Helium, which includes myself, our VP Engineering, VP of uh, Geoscience and our CFO, have all been involved in various uh, capacities with uh, both private and public companies, uh, mostly junior junior growth companies in both the uh, oil and gas and mining sectors uh, over time. Um, they're well experienced with uh, not only uh, allocating capital uh, judiciously and spending it accordingly, they understand what investors want to see. Um, in my case, the bulk of my uh, public company experience came as my time 
uh, in investment banking, where I raised uh, over $20 billion in equity wow. capital, or was part of that many deals, uh, both institutional and retail rich, and um, also uh, had uh, a lead role in uh, just about 30 M&A deals worth about $4.5 billion. So together, we feel that we're um, pretty well versed in, in understanding what uh, public company investors want, both at the junior and institutional uh, investor size. Now, you just mentioned it, the Well 130. The company just announced the first revenue from Well 130 and reported 1,100 barrels of light crude oil, which generated over 90,000 in sales revenue for the company. Can you tell us what this means for First Helium Inc.? Yeah, really, this is the first step, Rich, in generating cash flow for the company. Uh, and we're going to use that cash to further our exploration and development strategy of helium, uh, both at Worsley and our southern land block. Um, as I mentioned, we're uh, currently uh, installing or we will be installing the necessary equipment to put that one of 30 well into full time production. And once that happens, we anticipate that we'll be generating in the first year approximately six million dollars in cash flow from that oil well. And as I mentioned, we'll be putting that to use in furthering our exploration development of helium. Wow, that's uh, exciting to see the revenue growth come in. We love undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies before they start generating revenue. That's how we've done quite well with our community, finding early stage companies. Can you give the viewers an idea of how many different industries require helium? I don't think Helium is one of those things people understand or talk about very much, which I think could be huge for investors because that means it's a niche market. So can you explain all the different industries that require helium to make their products and how far away do you believe First Helium is from selling helium in the market? Yeah, it's uh, helium is an interesting inert gas that has many physical properties that are extremely important to the scientific community, the medical community, and, and parts of industry for sure. Uh, when we talk about helium, people think about obviously helium party balloons, everybody knows that. But in our slide deck, I would encourage investors to take a look at um, our outline of industries that use helium. There's We've got about 12 listed there, broader sectors, and then, those break down into subsectors. But for investors today, I would point to a, a number of key areas, including uh, MRI machines. So in the medical community, um, going in for your magnetic resonance imaging scan uh, involves helium. It's um, used in its liquid form to cool the magnets um, that help uh, the MRI machines uh, create their uh, images for the medical community also used in specialized welding so various types of uh, welding require helium for its cooling properties also used in fiber optic cable manufacturing and widely used in scientific research and um, scientific laboratory uses as well so those are the some of the key sort of historical uses i want to touch on a couple of real growth areas as we look to the future. The first one is high tech. So as computers become faster, we use more memory uh, and, and everyone knows the increasing daily use of high tech in our lives. We need more helium gas in the manufacture of um, semiconductor chips. Um, it, it's an integral part in producing faster, more complex uh, semiconductor chips. Also, um, most most investors are, are familiar with uh, the advent of more space exploration in the private sector, but also we're continuing to send more satellites into space. Helium is used because of its inert properties. It's one of the few gases that can be used to purge rocket engines safely. Um, and so an increasing amount of helium gas is used there Wow. Rich, those are just a few areas. Um, in terms of how close we are, we're ready to produce helium gas at our uh, 15 of 25 well. It's been tested at over 1.3%. It is ready to produce 
pending the installation of a helium processing facility. And I touched on uh, that a bit earlier in the conversation. Once we give the green light to uh, begin construction of that facility, expect um, first helium production to be about 12 months out from then. So I'm thinking wow. Q1 23 right now, Rich. Fantastic. Can't wait to watch you guys continue to support all of these growing sectors. And this is why I wanted you to explain that because when I started learning about helium, I was shocked in how many industries and sectors are utilizing this gas. So I'm learning a lot about helium as well. And when I saw some of the big names, tech names that are using helium, I was blown away. These are some of the biggest companies in the world. So you guys are definitely in a very interesting niche growing sector. Can you go through the capital share structure of First Helium Inc? Our community loves to understand the fundamentals and the meat and potatoes of the company and how you plan on attracting more institutional investment alongside more retail investors. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Rich, today we have 65 million uh, basic shares outstanding and another 35 million in dilutive secure securities outstanding. Uh, for about 100 million shares fully diluted. Um, in terms of the dilutive securities, the great bulk of those are uh, warrants at uh, 50 cents uh, that were issued in conjunction with our uh, Go Public Financing, and uh, they have an expiry of uh, July 2023. Uh, and as I mentioned, the uh, exercise price on those was 50 cents. Um, Key thing about the company uh, management, uh, key advisors and early shareholders hold just about 40% of the shares outstanding. Um, in terms of institutional investors, in our $12 million raise early, uh, I guess it was March 2021, um, roughly uh, $8 million of that went to institutional shareholders. And today, that would account for, call it 40% of our shareholder base is institutional. Um, we had uh, about three investment banks involved in that financing, including uh, Echelon, Cormark, and Canaccord. And um, a, a number of those uh, banks uh, have research on us. Uh, most recently, Cormark uh, put out an update on our 130 well. Um, and then they've got a, a, a buy rating of about 65 cents on us there. So in terms of attracting future institutional capital, I continue to talk to um, the, the banks that follow us, uh, routine meetings with uh, some of our existing shareholder base on the institutional front. As we continue to uh, explore and build out and look to potentially raise more capital to uh, explore we'll continue to include uh, institutional investors alongside our core group of retail investors, Rich. Ed, if there was one thing that you would want shareholders or potential investors that are watching this interview today to know about First Helium Inc., what would that be? Yeah, for me, Rich, it's really the fact that we've got the 15 of 25 helium discovery well ready to go. Our reserve engineers, uh, third party independent, have given it an NPV value of around 15 million bucks. Wow. Um, that combined with our recent uh, oil discovery that we're about to put on at the one of 30 well, um, you know, given what we anticipate there for production and where oil prices are, we feel that's got a market value using industry typical multiples of about another 15 to 18 million dollars. So all in, wow. we've got a, a underlying asset value of you know around 30 million bucks. And I don't think that's being fully recognized in the market. So for me, you're getting all of the exploration upside on our 79,000 acres up at Worsley and uh, just over 200,000 acres down in the Southern Exploration Block, you're getting all, all that exploration upside for free, Rich. Yeah. So that's, that's what I like to tell people today. Uh, we love identifying companies that are early stage that have this type of explosive opportunity. What is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions for you regarding First Helium Inc.? 
Yeah, a- absolutely. I'm happy to talk to people as much as I can, but that's not always possible. That said, reach out to our IR um, investor line or through the investor portal on our website, and our IR team will make sure that I get to your questions and, and, and we get you some answers. Fantastic. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, we have a great track record of identifying undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunities before they explode. Thank you for joining us today. The CEO of First Helium Inc., Edward Beresnicki. Thank you for joining us today, Ed. Hey, thanks, Rich, for having me on your show and and look forward to coming back to talk about uh, some of the exciting things we're working on here at First Helium. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Love to invite you back anytime you have big breaking news or anything you want to talk about. We'd love to invite you back here on Rich TV Live. Now, for those of you guys that are not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. If you like the video, smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe if you're alive. This is Rich from Rich to be Live with the CEO of First Helium Inc., Edward Beresnicki, saying, have a nice day. We'll see you soon.